Ladies and gentlemen, Pomot is the greatest electric rodent we have, and it's not even close. What's happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a fun team featuring the GOAT himself, and let's go ahead and get into it. So I found this match through my Discord server. If you're looking for a place to find matches, go ahead and join. The link is in the description. It's mostly where I find all my battles these days, and it's a pretty cool spot. So I've got myself an Orange Peel Elephant, and they decided to lead off with the Bronzong. So of course, I'm going to toss my Stealth Rocks out there. And it turns out, this is no ordinary Bronzong. He's actually going to end up going for the Trick Room on turn 1, and now shit gets weird. Everything that's slow is fast, and fast is slow, and the dimensions are all crazy. Not a, not a strategy you see often in singles, but I'm a big fan. So, I now decided to just go right for the knockoff here. I know I can get some pretty big damage, as they decided to set up Stealth Rock of their own, and I'm fine with that, because obviously I spin... And it doesn't, it doesn't look like they have a ghost type to switch into to block a spin. So I pretty much just decide, hey, I don't like these over here. I'm going to spin them back over to your side. So he actually ends up going for the Earthquake. Now, the reason for that, I suspect, is probably because they want to break my Sturdy ability um, to be able to knock Domfan out in one hit if possible. So I do get that Rapid Spin. And now as I'm looking at this floating fella, I think even without an item, a knockoff should actually probably kill here. My team doesn't have a whole lot to take care of Bronzong regardless. And it seems like this thing just wants to stay in here and do pretty much nothing. He decides to go for the Stealth Rock once again, and uh, he, he says, you're keeping these on this side, even though I can just Rapid Spin later. But I do go for another knockoff, does take care of the Bronzong. And the good news is there's only actually one more turn left of the Trick Room being up, so all the lollygagging is going to help out as Don Fan just chilling by himself, eating a little bit of leftovers, having a nice little picnic. Unfortunately, does not bring me up to full, so that sturdy ability is not going to be in play. And now they decide to bring in the Pseudo Wudo. So listen, this fake-ass rock tree is actually kind of scary. It's faster than me because of the Trick Room. I don't have much that wants to switch into it. If he decides to predict the switch into Muck and go for Earthquake, I have a bad time. It turns out... I just get nice and hammered, and down goes the Don Fan. before I was able to get up a Rapid Spin, so that Stealth Rock is going to stay on my side of the field. So, it looks like the Twisted Dimensions did end up working out for him, and it's kind of cool to see a fast Sudowoodo. So, at least now I get a free switch into whatever I want, and I decide to go into Greninja. Tongue is flopping, the sun's shining, and we're ready to make some stuff happen. Now, this is actually a, it's a Greninja set that's supposed to take advantage of the Torrent ability. If I can go for an Endure... I can pop a berry, boost my special attack, also put me in range to where Surf pretty much kills everything. But, of course, I decide to just go right for the safe play on the Pseudo Widow and go for the Surf. As it turns out, they bring in Jumpluff, the bane of my existence. This fluffy floating bastard is the worst thing ever and something's going to get put to sleep. So I decide the least useful Pokemon for me at this point is probably going to be Muck. So I decide to just bring in Muck to soak up the old sleep powder. And Jumpluff is kind of a weird fella. You never really know exactly what this thing is going to do. Uh, it could be like a sub leech seed set. It could be Swords Dance with Acrobatics. Regardless, I feel like Muck has a pretty solid matchup here as I'm just the most massive pile of goo on this side of the Mississippi. Why'd they make Muck just so big in this game? It's kind of upsetting. But uh, I do soak up that sleep powder there and I'm thinking, okay, I can actually go right into Cyclozar. I think I probably have a solid matchup against that and just banish his ass to the Shadow Realm. Uh, with an ice spinner, but they actually end up switching into Sudowoodo thinking that does better against Muck anyway uh, So now we got a nice little awkward double switch thinking. Oh, I uh, Didn't expect to see you here again pom-pom tree guy It seems as though we've got an awkward blind date and uh, I decide Norbert probably doesn't have much to do to this guy So I'm just gonna you turn my ass up out of here and uh, Basically try to save this thing for later. This is a shift gear cycles are set. I wanted to see if I could get it to do something, it seems like just like a fun mon to use. Uh, they actually end up switching out to my surprise going into the Bisharp, which is pretty nice because going for the pivot on my end does give me a nice little bit of momentum, plus a solid bit of chip, you know, just in case. And what that does do is now opens the door for the absolute legend. I'm telling you, Pomot has got to be one of the most fun Pokemon to use, and now he's about to absolutely eat some ass. So, I bring in Cheeto. This is a Choice Banded Pomot that takes advantage of that Iron Fist with punching moves. It also has Double Shock for some huge damage. But I'm thinking to myself, I just go right for a nice little close combat here with that Stab Choice Band. There's not much that wants to take that on this team at all. So, uh, they decide to go into Sudowoodo, probably thinking this thing is kind of just death fodder at this point. He got himself a nice kill, but now it's time for a solid little rest here. So I go for that close combat. Sudowoodo bulky, but not bulky enough nearly to live that, and down goes the rocky little fella. So, that opens the door for them to bring in whatever they want. I do take a defense drop on both sides, and they decide to bring in Ursaring. Now you're thinking to yourself, this is a normal type, and I could just absolutely close combat this shit into the Shadow Realm as well. 
But I'm thinking that's got to be too good to be true. There's there's no shot that this thing doesn't just go for a Terra. I'm thinking this thing goes for the Ghost Terra to basically just soak up the close combat and then just absolutely just demolishes me. So I decide to switch into Muck, thinking that's exactly what's going to happen. Unfortunately, they for so they just go for the Sword Stance. No Terra. I thought this you're going to put the kill on a Silver Platter that for sure means the Terra is coming, but... I have once again over predicted and now this thing has a sword stance plus it's got that burn for its guts and uh, this thing is gonna hurt it, it was mostly it was in my best interest to switch out Palmot regardless uh, because I do know that the the mock punch late game is looking really good with that choice band so I'm fine with that the facade does take care of muck who unfortunately came in got put to sleep and they just got absolutely rocked by a facade so not the best day if you're if you're my muck but you know he he'll come back it's fine so I'm thinking the only thing I can really do is go back into Cheeto. I, if he didn't Terra before, there's no way this thing has the Ghost Terra in the back. Plus, I can now change my moves to go right for that Mach Punch. Um, and that is definitely going to take care of Urzring. I hit him right in the target, right in the middle of the, the circle. I guess the, the ring, of course. And down goes the Urzring. I really thought that that thing had some type of Terra under its sleeve, but it didn't. So I'm fine with that. And now in comes the Pluff Daddy. Now this thing does resist the Mach Punch. You know what it does not resist, however? This absolute power. It's definitely just gonna end up knocking that thing out anyway. Thank you to the Stealth Rock damage. And Cheeto is working himself up a nice little kill streak here. So in comes the Quavel. Now this thing comes in dancing, wings flapping, and I don't think I can knock it out with a Mach Punch. So what I do is end up switching into Norbert here. I do wanna save the Palmot because I'm feeling like I can finish off the match with this thing because the absolute beastliness of our little electric fella. And Norbert is gonna come in on this thing going for a swords dance. And that is pretty damn scary, but I do have a trick up my sleeve with this Cyclozar thinking maybe I can get it to work. We're just gonna have to wait and see. So that thing gets a nice little plus two and honestly a very scary Pokemon. This uh, its toes kind of gross me out, but it's definitely a threatening fella. So I decide to go for the Terra. I'm thinking there's like a 50% shot that this thing goes for a close combat to try to knock me out. And I am going to be Ghost and it's going to go right through me. I also know that I'm faster and I can get some solid chip on this thing. Uh, and then maybe see if Pomot can finish it off. So I do go for that Terra. I put a little Ghost on my head thinking you cannot touch this. But also, you know, please go for a fighting move because I know you have other options and shit. So I do get the Ghost on my head and I do outspeed this thing with a nice little Dragon Claw. That is going to be some solid chip. And uh, that's honestly all I needed from Cyclozar here. But they end up going for the Ice Spinner and, you know, I just die because uh, I am not bulky and that thing has uh, a Sword Dance under its belt. So, you know, I didn't get exactly what I wanted from Cyclozar, but I did get the chip. And I guess that's it's kind of all that all that really mattered there. So this thing does get a nice little Moxie boost. It's now sitting at plus three. And that is a scary ass duck pe peacock Dan dancing guy. And you know what? Who also likes dancing? Cheeto is about to come and uh, make this thing dance in hell because this match is honestly a good showcase of the power of like a choice banded priority stab move. Uh, with Iron Fist stack on this thing, it's truly, you, you can't do much unless you have some type of answer for it. So I go for that mock punch. Uh, and of course, that is gonna that's gonna kill uh, the quick wave. So that is amazing. Palmat is absolutely rampaging, and now his last Pokemon is gonna be the Bisharp, who you know of course is absolutely allergic to these fists, and uh, that's gonna end up knocking that thing out. So Palmat was able to kill five of the six Pokemon on this team, and I just thought, you know, that was a hell of a showcase for the power that is Palmat. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate all the support. I do apologize that I have not been able to upload that much lately. I've been really busy with work and life, and it's, it's hard. But I'm still out here playing Mons, and I always will be. Thank you very much. See you later.